This Django Dev Blog is powered by MSI. Oh hi, I didn't see you there. Some of you have requested that um, we take a deeper dive into the art side of the Django game uh, that is currently in its uh, crowdfunding phase of production with Fig. So we're going to take a bit of a deeper dive. Um, first we're going to sketch, then we're going to do the digital art, and then we get even animated. And the subject of our illustration today is our 100th backer for the Fig campaign, who we have very much lucked out on because he's a guy we know very well. Uh, his name is Hannes, and he drums in some of the bands that I've been involved with in the past. That is why his gorgeous mug is currently on my screen, because I'll be living with that face for the next few hours. So, um, if you guys don't want to know how the sausage is made, close the video now. But we're going to show you all of the sausage today. Uh, for you purists, unfortunately we're not old school enough that we're not doing this with paint and canvas. Yes, we were going to make a joke about it, but we didn't because we're trying to keep it kind of factual today. We will be using a program called Freehand MX, which is the predecessor to Illustrator. And I know a lot of people are shouting at the screen at the screen which is like a um like a screen but it has more fat in it um and we'll be using a mouse and not a um a wacom tablet because that's how old school we are and from there we'll be doing a frame by frame animation in after effects with no plugins whatsoever this is all done from a blank page let's go So the first one was a bit of a failure, um, so that's just very indicative of, of, of how these things work, so we're going to have another go. Some people are easier to draw than others, and some phones keep on going off whilst we do these blob things. That's fine. You know what I mean? It, like, mm. Hannes is a friendly guy, and I think in the other one I tried very hard to get him to uh, represent his hardcore face, you know, mm -hmm. which which we actually wasn't really truthful of, mm. you know, who he is. So. Um, cool. So, uh, as you've seen, uh, first time not always a charm. Uh, the second one kind of represents better what our um, our, ba our hundredth backer is actually like in person. We have the pleasure of knowing him. Um, on Facebook, he pulls a lot of faces, which actually doesn't help us uh, illustrate him properly, but we kind of just went with personality here and just carried on. So now we scan and we illustrate on Freehand MX, Illustrator Elitus, suck it. Here is our uh, previous thing. This was our bunny for, um, uh, it's actually a good way to, to keep track of what you did last because it's always the last thing in the scanner. And then in my second drawer, we have, this is Django by the way. This is Django, all of it. These are all the sketches for Django. Scenarios, sometimes you see little things. And a whole lot of stuff in there about Django. About, I'd say, at this point, I'd say about 400 pages of it. <laughs> hey! So at this uh, point of the production, we are in freehand. We've just uh, imported our, uh, our sketch. And now we're going through the process of doing the line work kind of weird to comment on your work whilst it's going incredibly fast but uh, we're gonna give it our best shot as you can see it's it's not a brushstroke thing um, I illustrate all of the the lines uh, shapes so it gives a it gives it a unique uh, more of a dare I say woodcut kind of feel um, I really wish that I worked this quickly it would it would actually save a lot of time and effort 
so the sequence that I do this in, I normally, uh, unlike a painting where you start with your background and you work your way fr uh, forward, um, what I'm doing here is that I'm working from the foreground backwards and then I try to remind myself to group it as we go along because the objects like the mouth, the nose, the eyes, that will probably be pushed around in 3D space a little bit if I intend to make this move. So those are the objects that will probably protrude from the face a little bit. So draw those first, group them, uh, and then um, and then carry on with the rest. Uh, the exciting bit, everyone's favorite, is doing hair. So we are beating away. Again, the line work is a little bit more loose. Um, you're gonna have to do a little bit more interpretation, let's say, uh, when, you, when you're doing the final digital coloring. Do, do, do. Probably at this point where the carpal tunnel starts kicking in. How exciting to sit here and talk about your work in a very fast kind of way. Actually, this is all real time. This is how quickly I work. Isn't that impressive? So, I'm watching with hindsight, probably thinking that I should have grouped all those hair follicles before moving on to the next piece, because now selecting everything is going to be a bloody mess. Doing some highlights now. Um, in regards to our game style, it's kind of difficult to decide where the lighting will be if, if you do the characters before the scene, which in most cases is the case. Um, so the highlights and the shadows are normally kept to a minimum. Now here's me struggling to try and group everything, but because we're doing it super fast, we seem to have gotten it right. Um, hair, hair last. What I'm probably going to do here is that I'm going to keep this top separate to anchor down the two poodle ears of Hannes's um, uh, hair locks that hang down from the side. Um, and yeah, I'm doing highlights. There's no specific rule as to how we do these things. You just kind of do it. Um, just. Just for a, from completely um, general knowledge, what am I trying to say here? Just a bit of trivia. Um, Hannes is a hundredth backer, and uh, I'm fortunate that he is our hundredth backer because it, um, it allows me to at least speak to the person who I intend to illustrate and animate. Um, uh, so that I won't have any legal problems later. Um, it wasn't planned, it was just a nice coincidence. Of our first hundred backers, most of them are people that Graham and I personally know. But luckily for us, a drummer was our hundredth backer. We are sitting now currently at, I think, 260 backers. That's how long it took me to make this illustration. So, yep, next separate. I am going to change the color of Hannes' hair after this video concludes because his hair it does have this weird yellowy brunetteness about it, almost like a greeny yellow. Must be the Boxburgness. The Brackbun flavor. Wasn't that exciting? So at this point, I've exported the freehand um, file and I've imported it into Illustrator. And what we're doing now is we're separating all of the limbs we intend to animate, so everything from body, drum kit, hair, whatever's going to move needs to be separated. So um, we have covered the illustration side, we covered the drawing and freehand MX side, obviously for you modernly inclined cats you'll be doing that in Illustrator instead of freehand. Um, we didn't record the bit where, where the body was created and, and separated. Um, the drum kit already existed, um, we just had to separate that. All of that also happens in, in Illustrator um, to make it easier in After Effects because After Effects likes, sometimes likes AI files. And now we're going to animate this character. Um, we're going to be, just in case you, you haven't caught on by now, um, Hannes is a drummer, so we'll be animating him drumming in um, the room uh, that our trailer is in. Um, and we'll be using a track by the band Zerk that Hannes and I both happen to used to be a part of. So here we go. 
Um, we've imported some of the stuff already. Um, we also are using, we, we're using a new project here because the existing game project is getting a bit cluttered. So I'm trying to, whatever I can do separately and then just export as a quick time alpha channel or a PNG sequence, we do that. Okay. So this first part is the worst part of animation, especially my style of animation. It is the rigging thing. We were going to put in pivot points or anchor points. And we're going to try and label uh, color, color our, our layers so that we can have uh, some form of order in there. And this is going to be incredibly boring to watch. So we're going to, we're going to probably speed this up by some amount of speeds. Let's go. This is super exciting. Look at me go in super speed. Um, so what I try and do is um, try and color code things. So um, with all the hair things, eyebrow, um, Hannes's poodle, ears, pardon, the uh, back hair, all of that, I, I make brown. All the stuff on the face that needs to move, I'll make red. Um, the the limbs will be purple or blue. So just when you start working with a stupid amount of layers, uh, because I'm a stupid illustrator, you'll be able to um, to keep track. Uh, I cannot I cannot actually keep up with, with with the immense speed that I'm currently working at. So what I'm doing now, um, I paired everything. I anchored everything where they need to be. Um, all the head stuff is paired to the head. Head is paired to the neck. Neck is. Paid to, paw, uh, paid to the torso, and uh, so we go. Um, then I uh, uh, took the drum beat to which I am animating to. I put down, I started off with the hat and snare. I put in tags where the hat and snares are going to go, and I'm going to start with the snare hand. First thing we do is that we take the hand itself um, and we animate that. And then when we've done all the snare hits and what looks like to be Tom hits at this speed, we then get the arm to match. It's very important to make sure that your keyframe velocities match. If everything is on zero, it'll be boring. And if everything's on a hundred, it's gonna be a little bit too quirky. So try and keep a balance between, um, uh, you know, uh, just just make sure that your hang time is correct uh, and your, your arms move. Normally when the hand is up, your velocity will be high. And normally when it hits something, the velocity will be low. Um, so it drifts in the air and it snaps towards uh, the thing it needs to hit. I'm already speeding along to hi-hat hand. Um, how exciting. Repeating the process, just making sure hitting the hand. And also the exciting challenge that's going to come with this hand is that the second that the hand needs to turn, like it is now, when it hits uh, Tom 2 and the floor Tom and the crash, we have to use a different... Um, uh, hand model. So now you'll see that the hand is pointing inward. So I'm just just getting all my keyframes correct with this hand. The second of this process is done, we are going to move, we're going to obviously change the hand and then try and fix the rotation and anchor points to get that to work. Um, the last thing is that the arm is then paired to the sleeve or the shoulder and then we'll use that purely to exaggerate certain things. But in order to get the drumming right, we animate the hand and then we animate the arm to follow the hand. And then we'll animate the sleeves to follow. As you can see, there needs to be some fixing there because the arm is kind of disjointing with the shoulder. I assure you, I will fix all of that. So right now it looks a little bit stale and boring because Hannes is sitting very still, much like he did in the Chromium days. <laughs> uh, this is actually what Hannes looked like when he drummed for Chromium. Um, not in the recordings, mind you. I'm joking, Jared. I love you dearly. So we are making the hi-hat bounce. Um, I've made this a little bit random because the hi-hat doesn't bounce that um, rigidly when you perform live. And then whenever the stick hits, then I'll just tilt it around and the z-axis which is just your, your dutch tilt angle and it'll flop about left to right basically what i'm also doing now is that whenever the kick um hits then um then the drum kit will move on the y-axis i'm busy redrawing all the eyelid assets because it's nice to have that as a as an object within after effects so to do the blinking um, 
I use masks and it's just slightly more neat than trying to warp or contort um, vector objects. What I've done here is that I've moved the nose and the mouth and eyebrows slightly forward in 3D space. So when you tilt the head upon the X and Y axis, it'll move. I duplicated the beard after I moved it forward and pinned each beard on the left cheek and the right cheek. So when the head tilts from from the, on the Y axis or from left to right, it will fill up. It will give you that 3D effect without falling off the face. Let's take some clever masking to uh, cover up the lumpy animation. We're now doing the kick drum leg. Um, so whenever he kicks the drum kit, that is pinned to the floor, which makes sense, will tilt forward upon the X axis. We're now moving the head and the neck. Um, often what, what you can do here is that with your Z keyframing, you can copy and paste that from your head to your neck and your torso, but just make sure that you offset it by a frame or two. So it gives you that, that cool whip feeling, otherwise it will look a little bit too mechanical. Here's my least favorite part of the entire process, and that is to get the hair to move. Hair moves in a very counterintuitive way, and I haven't quite solved it, so I just basically do what works. Um, also, what I've realized here is that I didn't give Hannes any ears because in the illustration, his, um, his ears would have been hidden by his hair. So in this particular loop playthrough, you can spot the mistake, but I fix that by the time we get to the final thing. Hooray! So I guess that's that. Um, now we're going to export with Elf channels and we're gonna drag it into After Effects into our existing scene and then we're donezo. Okay, so we we rendered out our drummer um, and we've opened our stage uh, composition from our fig trailer. And now we're just going to finish up and perhaps we're throwing some URL stuff in there because, you know, we've got to promote ourselves. And now we're just making tweaks, making the composition longer, getting Hannes into 3D space, and then sorting out the shadow of all the objects, and 